Get ready for the assault of the weird gadgets. We've got an Olo clip, a Doxy, a Zensorium Tinky, a Meonex, and an Iconia. What are they? You'll find out next. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it, right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter Before You Buy. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to AudiblePodcasts.com slash Before You Buy. Hey, welcome everybody to Before You Buy, the Twit product review show where we get great stuff in with weird names in this case and ask our uh, staff to review them. Uh, Shannon Morse, our producer, is it just a coincidence that all the names of all the products are so strange this week? <laughs> it might be. Did you plan this? <laughs> I plan everything. <laughs> Shannon's got a Doxy. Tono's got, Tony's got an Olo clip. Chad's got a Zensorium Tinky or Tinky. <laughs> we got a Meonix. Too. And an Iconia. I'll tell you what, let's start with uh, Tony Wang, editor in chief Sounds here good. at Twit. He's got the Olo clip. Tony? I'm Tony Wang for Twit.tv and before you buy, and I am reviewing the Olo clip for the iPhone 5. So, what the Olo clip is, is it's a three lens system for your iPhone 5. And as the name suggested, this is a clip, and it clips straight onto your iPhone uh, when your phone is not in the case. And uh, it gives you three different lens choices. You have your uh, sort of fish eye lens, and your wide angle lens, and your macro lens. And um, I tried all three lenses, and they they work as advertised. The fish eye is not a complete fish eye because uh, because of your four three image, so parts of the fish eye is cropped off. Uh, but you do get the effect uh, in in some edges of the uh, warping that a fisheye will give you. Um, I actually prefer the wide-angle lens. Uh, it does give you a little bit more information uh, versus the, the stock iPhone 5 lens. So that's probably the lens that you use most of the time when you have this clip. The macro lens is for your extreme close-up, and I do like how uh, you can unscrew the wide-angle lens and that will reveal the macro lens. So it's sort of a pretty cool design so even though there's only two lenses that you see there's actually three here pros and cons the design is actually pretty ingenious uh, it fits perfectly snug and um, you can actually have a lot of fun with your iPhoneography if you're into taking pictures with iPhone and posting them on um, Instagram and your other social networks uh, con you can't use this if you have a protector like a screen protector any sort of like armor uh, film that protects the front or the back of your phone. Uh, and that's just because the way they designed the clip, uh, it is a very snug fit, which is just enough that it doesn't fall off when you're using it. And it also doesn't scratch your phone because it's too tight. Buy, try, or don't buy, I would definitely give this a buy. Uh, for $70, it is a really fun way to spice up your iPhoneography. And if you're really into taking pictures with your phone, this is definitely the tool for you. I'm Tony for Twitter TV, and before you buy, and this is the Olo clip for iPhone 5. I have one, too, and I really like it. I have one for the old iPhone uh, 4, and uh, the 5 one is just a little bit skinnier, so it'll fit on an iPhone. But Tony's right. You can't use a case with it, so get ready to take your case off. And if you have something glued onto your phone, you're going to be out of luck entirely. It's that tight of a fit. Thank you, Tony Wang, editor-in-chief. Shannon Morse, our producer, is here. She's also the star of Threat Wire on... Uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash techfeed. Star. Star. Bling, and you bling. have brought a scanner with you. Yes. So I'm so glad I got to check this out during tax season. Because, ah, oh Good for my receipts? Gosh. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. So this is a, like a little um, portable scanner. It's not... Yes. Do they make a big version of this or this they is They do. It? So oh, they okay. have the original Doxy. There's the Doxy Go, which is a little bit more expensive than this one. This was the Doxy One specifically a portable scanner for about $149, $150. 
Um, the, the reason why it is portable is because it's only about one pound. It's less than a pound. It's 14 ounces. But not, I know, it's battery or USB charge. You have to plug it, it into the wall. It does have. Oh, it does. Yes. Yeah, so you, you just can, don't have any batteries it can only in it. Use, you can only use uh, four AAA rechargeable batteries. It okay. will not work good. with lithium ones. But that's good. Ones. You want to make them rechargeable. That way you right. won't be bad to the environment. So you can stick those in there if you want. Um, if you stick them in there, it does make it about one pound. Okay. But otherwise, only 14 ounces has a little two gig SD card that comes with it so you don't have to buy a spare SD card unless you really want to and then on the side it has a little port a little micro USB port to plug it into your computer uh, and then it also has the power charger of course so you could I scan to a computer or to memory and then bring the card that makes it means you could like bring it to a library or somewhere and scan stuff and then so unfortunately it will not work when you have it plugged into your computer via the USB it does that not is scan just, the computer it won't What's scan the straight USB to the computer it then? just scans to this SD card ah. the USB port is to plug it in and transfer the files from the SD Turns card so you don't have to reader. take it out Got it. yeah so that's very a very good use that's case scenario if you don't have if you don't have an SD card reader on right. like an old machine or you just want to plug it in and have it sitting at your desk for you know a long time so um, I brought a couple different pieces of paper to test it out with it's got and its own little uh, sheet feeder yeah it has its own sheet feeder one thing I did not like is the fact that it only does one piece of paper at a time right. um, I believe that's just you know one of the reasons why it is portable yeah you couldn't have a sheet feeder in that size you can't so they yeah. say line it up close to the left side It'll grab onto the piece of paper and it'll just run it through. It takes less than 10 seconds to do a piece of paper. Ta-da! Now, this kind of scanner has been around for a long time. What makes the difference on a scanner like this is the software that comes with it. Yes. So, this one comes with the Doxy Smart Software. Let's grab that in there. Um, the smart software you can use on Mac or Windows. It does not have a Linux version, unfortunately. Um, kind of wish it did because I also use Linux at home, but I know a lot of people don't. The scanner software is very, very easy to use. I pulled it up on my uh, Mac and I had no problems figuring it out. You just plug in the SD card, pull up Doxy uh, Scanner Smart Software, and you can either, you can do things such as staple different PDF files together, which is very useful if you have a couple of different pieces of paper that you scan separately. You can just tack them onto each other and choose staple. And it can also share out to different uh, cloud sources like Dropbox and Evernote and things like that. Um, on their website, they also offer a little SD card reader for your I iPad. And they also have a 30-pin connector, which is great for your newer iPads. I have an older one, so I have a 30-pin. Uh, they this have li thing is lightning or 30-pin. Or yeah. And this looks like the Apple... It looks exactly like. I wonder if it is the Apple. I believe it Apple is. Yeah, because it looks exactly like the yeah, one. Yeah. Might not have the Apple um, name brand on it, but same otherwise. Okay. Uh, designed by Apple in California. Yeah. So they they're yeah. just selling so, reselling the. Apple. Yeah. So they're just reselling. Does the, the scanner software have optical character recognition? Does it read the text and turn it into? It does not turn it into editable, editable text. text. Okay. So it no will only OCR. do PDF, JPEG. Um, okay. uh, what are the other ones? It'll do bitmap. So it makes um, an image, but ones. not does yeah. not turn into text. Yeah, exactly. So this was really, really good for receipts, uh, even really long receipts. It would keep them very straight does if I took the time to put it up there. Does it know it's a receipt? Does it somehow sense it? And it doesn't sense it, so to speak. It'll still turn it into a JPEG. It's not going okay. to rename it. So this is fairly limited like software compared to yeah. something like the neat receipts, which knows it's a receipt, yes. will automatically categorize the receipt yeah. and so forth. This just scans it and gives yeah, you a copy. Yeah, it scans it. It's very, very simple. It just turns everything into a JPEG and then you can resave everything as a PDF if you wanted to on from the SD card. Can I scan double-sided or is it only going to... It's I'll only one it, side, so one, you can turn it over and then do the other okay, side, staple it. them together. Yeah. But that's, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I really like the fact that this was super fast but i did notice that if i had a photograph something with a whole bunch of different kind of colors i would get a little bit of color banding on the jpeg image um i believe that's just because of the resolution that it scans it at it's only 300 dpi so it's not any higher than that uh although i do believe their more expensive one does 600 dpi if you want to spend that money for that but otherwise i think this is a really really good choice if you have a lot of receipts that you need to scan and you need to do them quickly, if you want to take it on the go with you, unplug it and stick it in your, you know, in your purse, put some little double A or triple A batteries in there, I think it's great.
So, so it's essentially a, a basic scanner. It is. $149. Scans to memory, not to the computer. Right. But you can then read the card either via the built-in USB or on a card And you can share via the reader. cloud if you have ever And you can share it because the software will share it. Yes, it which is very, very nice that that's already built in. It's pros very useful. Pros and cons? So my pros are it's very fast. I love that it only takes, you know, about seven, eight seconds to scan each page. Um, even shorter if you're just doing a business card, so to speak. Uh, the high resolution 300 DPI is perfect for receipts. You can you can do the uh, zoom in and zoom out on your computer, no problems. Um, it does have issues with photos though, and then it's very easy to use. I mean, it's so simple. It's it's great. <laughs> My cons are, of course, it's a little bit pricey at 150. Um, the fact that it can only do one paper at a time, and the banding on the photographs. So overall, I would definitely give it a buy though, just because I have been using this a lot at home for all of my receipts for tax season. So I think it's perfect for that. Anyway, that's about it. I would also take a look at the neat receipt. Same, same mm -hmm. idea, 20 bucks, 30 bucks more. And it does do more of the categorization. It yeah. understands business cards. It understands receipts. It'll say this was the amount of the receipt, things like yeah. that. Uh, so but I it think is a it's a good option. Expensive. Yeah. Doxy, that's the Doxy 1. Doxy 1, They yes. make other models as well. D-O-X-I-E. Yes. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Shannon is the host of this show. I mean, uh, producer of the show. And we'll occasionally host. You hosted when I was gone, right? Um, Did you do the show yet. when I wasn't here? No, not Did yet. You're gonna? Yes, I'm All going right. to in September. I'll disappear I'm soon. I'm excited. <laughs> so you get to host it. <laughs> We're going to uh, take a look in just a bit at the ePure phone. Lorik, the intern, yeah. <laughs> makes his debut. Actually, it's his second time, isn't it? Hasn't he done this one before? This is Lorik's first time. It's his debut. All right. And Chad has the sensorium think. Tinka? Tinky. Tinky. I know. Tinka, 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 winka. Before we do anything, though, let me tell you about our favorite sponsor, one of our. We have. All of our sponsors are great, but I got to tell you, this is one that really saves me time, and I love that idea. Never go to the post office again with stamps.com. You don't need to go to the post office to buy postage. Believe it or not, you got everything you need right now. You got a computer, got a printer, got an internet connection. All you need is stamps.com. Buy and print U.S. postage from your computer, your printer. You don't need a postage meter. You don't need special ink. You just need stamps.com. And stamps.com adds features you can't get anywhere else. Things like automatically reading the address from your QuickBooks, your address book. If you're uh, selling on Amazon or eBay or Etsy, you can just pull it right from the web page. It'll print right on envelopes, the postage, but also your logo, your return address, the address of your recipient. And if you're sending express mail or priority mail, confirmation uh, kind of mail, you can automatically send an email to your recipient letting her know that it's on its way, giving them a tracking number. I just think stamps.com is so great. Plus, you can save money. They've got discounts you can't get at the post office. I've got a special deal for you. See right at the front page there? Stamps.com, $80 value. Stop. Don't do it. Click the radio microphone up in the right-hand corner, enter before you buy, and that $80 no-risk trial turns into a $110 bonus offer, including... That beautiful scale I was holding up. I love this USB scale. It automatically makes sure you always have the right postage. Uh, and a $5 supply kit, $55 in free postage coupons you can use over the first few months of your membership, and one month free. You can cancel and keep the scale. It's yours to keep. Just go to stamps.com, click the radio microphone, and use the offer code before you buy. Never go to the post office again. Save time and money with stamps.com. All right. Intern Lorik. Always, <laughs> it's it's a mixed blessing when you get the interns to do a review. Because they're young, they're inexperienced, yes. and usually they're terrified. Yes. <laughs> but Shannon walked him through it, mm -hmm. and he did a great job. Let's take a look at Lorik's review of the ePure phones. Hello, my name is Lorik. I'm an intern for Twit, and today I'm going to review the ePure by Swiss Voice. The home phone cordless phone. Now, for me, the experience was awesome. For one thing, I'm going to tell you something. The sound quality of this phone is tremendous. I could hear even the most crappy cell phone user's voice so well. And for also, even the crappy cell phone user could hear my hear my voice so well. Like I was call I called my friend and he could hear me so well, and I could hear him even clearly. Like, I thought I was in the same room with him. It was awesome. Now, for the look, for the look, as you can see, it's hollowed out, which is so unique to most, to this phone. 
because most phones are not hollow. They're all like clunky and bulky and looks like a brick. Like I could literally build a house with one of those phones. And the feel is just like, uh, it so feels so good. And for one thing, the battery life is so great. This small battery right here can hold up to 10 hours of charge. You can keep this off the home thing of the home base and it could still be alive for like 10 hours straight. Now for the buttons. The buttons are big for even the biggest thumb users, so I can actually just precisely press the button and call somebody, instead of those small phones where it's like you press one thing and then you're pressing a bunch of other stuff. Now, there's also a Bluetooth one for said cell phones where you can activate, where you can activate this through your cell phone, which for me is kind of redundant, but for those who are afraid to get cancer from your cell phone, it's, it's great to have. Here are my pros and cons. For one thing, the pros, great sound quality. You can hear people very crystal clearly. People can hear you crystal clearly, which is amazing. Buttons have, are big and nice for even the biggest thumb users. Plus the battery life is like 10 hours straight. What? It's longer than any iPhone out there. Now, with all great things, there are certain things that's wrong with it. Say for the cons. For one thing, the screen, for most people who have bad eyesight or people who wear glasses and forget their glasses, the screen's kind of small, as you can see, so it's going to be hard to navigate through it with, your, with bad eyes if you have any. Plus, also, there's no real way to operate the menu. Like, there's no crystal clear way. You have to, like, figure out which buttons operate certain things, which it can be a little annoying, but you can get live through it. Plus... For those who carry it left or right-handed, the volume button is like so easy to press. Like I can press this with my thumb by accident. Even if I use my left hand, I, my middle finger can hit it like instantly and it's going to be annoying to operate it with the volume. So that's the bad thing. And if you don't really have a lot of money or you're not looking for the best thing out there and like with your limited amount of paycheck, it's up around $115 and that's kind of pricey for even this kind of phone. But for me, if you really would like, to, if you really would like to know my opinion, I would say I would give this a definite buy. For one thing, the con, the pros weigh out more than the cons, and I mean the cons are like so small. I mean like they're like that tiny, tiny small. So if you're really looking for the best phone out there and you're willing to spend a little bit more money on it, I definitely get the E pure. Sing. Back to you, Leo. Thank you, Lorik. Lorik Decker. Yes, he's an intern. Yes, he's adorable. And thanks to Shannon, <laughs> he did who a great coached job. him. Yes, I did. Did some a little coaching. You could tell because you, you got him going. It's funny because he thought 150 bucks. That's like that's like three months' pay for Lorik. Mm -hmm. So that's oh, yeah. No. He's, it's a lot of money. He's, that's terrible. And and somebody in the chat room mentioned it. I looked it up, and it's true that a Swiss Voice, which is a Swiss company, is a division of a, a larger Swiss company called Ascom. Oh, <laughs> and they ch they changed their name, and I think it was probably a I good idea. I don't blame them. Ascom, big for the yeah. biggest thumb it was users. Fine. For the biggest thumb users, there's nothing better than Ascom. <laughs> and I think it's probably good they changed their name. Laura Decker, you rock. Great job. We're going to see more of him. I have a feeling I'm before you buy. Oh, yeah. Chad is here. Hey. Where did you get the Zensorium Tinka? So, <laughs> I've been called, yeah, who knows what to call this thing. What this is, is it? The Tink. So, this is a blood oxygen level respiratory rate and heart rate oh, monitor. So we saw this at CES. Right. We we saw, and not just this device, we saw this device at CES, but we saw a whole bunch of devices that are sort of geared towards checking your vital signs. Yeah, but most of them were pedometers and heart rate monitors. Right. This is the only one I saw that measured more than just your your footsteps or your heart. Right. This is pretty cool. And and this this sort of technology that that it is that it will do is, with the blood rate, uh, the blood oxygen level, and your your respiratory level and your your heart rate is something that paramedics use as a as a base for telling any sort of health related issues. So, really, this so is an important important thing. Yeah, and 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 it, it's almost like blood pressure in that it's just it's just one of those things to check vital signs. Right. That almost everyone does. Now, this is not a bracelet. This isn't nope. something you wear as you run around. No. So, what this is, is it actually has a 30-pin connector. Oh, okay. And then it'll connect to an iOS so you device. you connect it to your iPad or your right. iPhone. Right. And then it has a you know an app that goes along with it. So, this so. is like, kind of like the Why Things devices where, you know, when you plug them in, the, 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 the uh, iPad recognizes it, launches the app. 
Or does it? You have to. Do it it doesn't. Hand. It, and in fact, that I I have a few other sort of health monitoring apps, and when you plug it in, it notices that it's plugged in, right. and, and the iPad says. Uh, hey, I've noticed you plugged right. this in. Do you, do you want me to launch the app? And this doesn't have that feature. And I, I kind of wish that their that their coders w would get on that. So you All do right. have to manually. Here we go. It's not that big of a uh, problem. This is an iPhone app blown up. Okay. They don't have an iPad version yet, but it seems yeah. to it, it's Fine. you know it, it's usable. it knows it's you. So obviously you've configured it, and it does it could track your uh, previous. Settings? It does. Yeah. Um, one thing with the interface, it kind of goes away from normal iPhone and iPad stereotypes where you have to you have to click and hold what? down that's up. interesting it's I, I got I kind was of trying UI. to click stuff I thought yeah. I thought I had a buggy app but yeah. so it, it measures two things it measures a Zen score and a Vita score let's do the Vita score first the Vita score is sort of your all-around sort of body check this will this has the uh, the respiratory per per minute, the blood uh, oxygen level, and the beats per minute. Oh, well, that's quite a bit. Right, right, right. And that's all sort of rolled into one score. But you can see the individual right. broken out. You can once well. you once okay. you go into it. So it's trying to simplify sort of. Let's all see your of these. Vita score. So this is actually this. I took this a little while ago. So, so eighty two. Eighty two. So let me go ahead and measure uh, the score. You're yeah, right. I don't like that user interface. That's yeah, very it's strange. a little weird. Now here's I'm it's thinking. I, well, uh, uh, what's it doing? Hello? The one con, and I'm going to come back to this in my pros and cons, is that this is a buggy yeah, app. Um, not only bad. is... Here, let me go ahead. Oh, there we go. So it looks like we forced it in. Sometimes when you plug it in... It's trying to see um, the sensor. It doesn't maybe. notice there it. There we go. There we go. So now the process of measuring is just putting your thumb on these... It looks like right. two LEDs on the dongle. Right. right. So this uses... There's a few ways to to get your your blood oxygen level. You can either use reflective, which is what this is, or reflat refractive, which goes through your thumb. So this is you going get to into choose, or? no no no. I'm just uh, th that's, that's just, just how, just how this technology okay. works. So this uses a reflective technology. Uh, one of the problems with this type of technology, and go ahead if you can show the whole app. Uh, one of the problems with this technology is it's best in low light. Um, scenarios. Oh, the light might be leaking because, around. Right. You're, yeah. yeah. And then also, you can see this thumb pr pressure. If I kind of loosen my my grip on this... It changes it. It changes. So, so what it, it has a little sensor in there that uh, determines how hard I'm pushing. And, and is so it there's giving an you feedback saying, don't press as hard, press uh, harder? Just only that number on screen. Now, it, it wants me to be at 100 to 150. Well, that's hard. Um, I believe that this is another bug in the system oh. because sometimes when I do the when I do the tutorial, it will put me in the correct area. Right. And right now, I feel like I'm pushing way harder than and I did, still and it's still only at eighty. Uh, the other problem is is when it was going through, you you actually missed it because it was it cut away. So I'm actually going to try to retake. Do it again, yeah. Um, is that one? There's this graph at the bottom. See, See now it, you're at 100. It, and if I push it as hard as I possibly can, <laughs> it's still only at 90. Optimize. And so this oh. graph at the bottom also does some really weird feedback. So it'll jump oh. up. It'll it'll sometimes max out. Oh. But, and I don't even know what this what this. <laughs> it's not telling you. I don't even know what it means. <laughs> um, also, halfway through, sometimes the graph will just disappear. And it and and. It says, "Oh, keep going. You're doing. See, it just gone. Keep going steady. Gone. Okay. But it didn't do that the first few times. So there's some very inconsistent measuring. Well, that makes you wonder how good the measurement's going to be Absolutely. if this is fluctuating. Like Absolutely. This. And that number and is very different. That number is very different. Now it says confidence low. The last one said confidence high. Can I try it? Uh, absolutely. So uh, some things to <laughs> I wanna, note. I want to do it. You can actually see. I, I want to do. I do want to show off these numbers. So, eighty-two beats per minute. That's pretty. It's that's high. Semi high you're because I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm you're on excited. camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, your uh, uh, your breathing is just sixteen breaths a minute. Okay, and that's normal. That's, that's normal. normal for me. And, and my, your uh, oxygen level, a hundred percent. Perfect. Very good. Is what if it's lower? Does that mean you're dying? Um, that means <laughs> that you could have low circulation. That could that could right. be a symptom of, so of now something. So now I less. press this button to do it. So press and hold and retry. It's, retry. There you go. Boy, that is the worst user interface. I know. Okay. I really, really dislike. Thumb, it. please. I'm at a hundred. Thumb Good. detected. Well but done. But you should be at hundred to hundred fifty. I'm pressing really hard. I know, right? It's oh. not. And you don't want to push too hard. You know, your heart will beat more than 2.5 billion times and pump about 212 million liters in a lifetime. So it does give you fun, uh, fun little facts. Uh, 
I'm pressing as hard as I can. Yeah, and you probably oh. should press that. I, you don't, you know, I'm telling you that, folks, so you understand. I'm really pressing hard. Right. My thumb is turned and so white. You, and you also just, like, maxed out the thing and it went away again, yeah. which well, is very I, confusing. I, because I'm I can also the, see the light turned off. Conan the strong man. Which is silly. Why it, did the light turn off? Is it bright lights? I know. I'm I'm very it's, oh I'm dead it's inconsistent so I my oxygen level is 88 percent so that's, I'm not healthy uh. beats per minute only 68 so I'm very calm even though right. I was grunting right and my <laughs> breath per minute is even lower than yours see right. I'm actually in better shape than you are right well so what's funny is these are why th is my vital level so low um that's a good it says question tired. Well, you're, <laughs> your your blood oxygen level that's the lowest I've ever so seen someone's blow, blood oxygen level. It's at it, ninety I to a hundred. Is, to give is up good. smoking. I gotta right. tell you. Um, but right, everything else so, is good. So so uh, let's say that let's say that we were confident in this score and we yeah. go ahead and hit save. So okay, yeah. So, now we have a track. Now we have a track, and that and I've you screwed could, up your measurements, of course. That's eh, okay. Uh, you, you we could shout out, so we could share this with friends with Vita, or uh, there's there's Facebook uh, integration. I haven't turned this that on. This is fun though, because you can see that if you brought this to a party, everybody would want to do it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> you just need to add a breathalyzer. I mean, uh, you I know, know we're that, getting one tomorrow. So. Uh, yeah, p perhaps. I don't know how to get out of this Facebook thing now that uh, I. Oh, you better it. say hi to your um, friends. Uh, here we go. Now I'm out. Um, okay, so. So that is the Vita score, and you can even, if I go, I'm done, let me go back, and this is my history, my Vita. <laughs> the chat room says they're calling 911, I'm actually dying. Right. According <laughs> to that. Uh, and why didn't... Take me to the nearest oxygen bar. So it says that your oxygen level, blood oxygen level is Terry, who oh, is that's why. Not, a not a trained professional, but nevertheless knows a lot. Says that it should your oxygen level should be ninety five percent to be healthy. Mine was eighty eight. Eighty eight. Yeah. So if you look back through my, I don't know my how scores, it would measure your blood oxygen level by shining a light into your thumb. Um. It. it uh, how does it do that? Uh, I'm. I'm. Not, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> on the technology, but I know that that light will reflect off of off of your your. Uh, Is it the blood. measuring the redness of my blood? Something like that. Uh, it's. It's like uh, it's magic, Leo. It's uh, magic. Technology uh, is magic. So you can see my my old scores. Uh, we have. Uh, I would never got below 98 on my blood oxygen level mm. and Leo, I Leo did <laughs> I range anywhere from yeah from uh 70 uh, uh 87 to 90 to you know 95 in my Vita score it also has this other score called the Zen and I'm actually not going to take that because it takes a full 60 seconds to take it what's but, the Zen score? so Zen it tries to measure your stress level once again you seem very calm um, I have gotten the worst stress level test. I know you're not. You're a stress. Oh my case. gosh! You I'm should not. absolutely. If so, if this it, said you weren't stressed, I'd really be right. suspect. It doesn't give you a pressure feedback on this one. What it is looking for is heart Just rate variability, and so hopper. it will give you these circles that you're oh, supposed to breathe. Heart rate variability. That's what. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. The, the what's it called? The vitus. Yeah. And uh, it looks like the, it was interrupted. I don't know why. Oh. I okay. So let's retake. And it says that it's un. Plugged, oh, even though it's obviously okay. plugged in and the light is All on. Right. I think we've seen enough so, pros and cons. So, pros is that <laughs> this is the smallest device of its kind out there, and it is designed. Here, give it to me. I'm going to try it. Give it to me with your, the, the pad. I'm going to just do it. Okay. I'm going to do it in the dark. And calmly. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, it uses a reflective sensor, which is kind of cool. You don't have to not have something. Uh, not re not to, yeah refractive. So you don't have to clamp something on your finger, which is okay. nice. Then um, also there is a lot of good in-app information. So it will try to. So it's, it doesn't, doesn't think it's doesn't plugged in it. still. Um, doesn't see it. This would drive you crazy. How much? Yeah. Uh, One hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. Um, so it, it does have a lot of in-app education, which I really like. So this one you're supposed to breathe along with the circles, and it it measures your heart rate, and then it'll give you a score. My score has never been above 50. It was 30 most wow. of the time. I got, I finally, I kind of learned how to get into Zen mode, and it got up to around 45. The other thing is you can uh, sh see the other scores of people who are also taking the tink. So you can you have an average of people in that's cool in your except that there's no one in my age group. So it was always an average of zero, uh, which was a little bit. Uh, what but, is your age group? Um, eighteen to twenty-five. 
There's no one in the no 18 to 25, 18 age, 18 group? To 25 age group wow. using this app. And that could change in the future. Um, so those are the prawns. Uh, c- c- pros. The prawns? <laughs> prawns. Did you say prawns? I, I put my arm right way, way up. Yeah. The, so the pros are small prawns. design. It uses a cool, the cool reflective design and uh, the app, in-app education. For the cons... Inconsistent, inconsistent, inconsistent app. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not I was not sure if it was reading it correctly, if if something was broken, if if I was doing it wrong, I'd try to cover my thumb to make sure that it needs uh, to know. be consistent. Otherwise, right. you have no confidence right. in the measurement. Right. Um, there is no way to share this info once you get it. So that was a that's a score that I got. Uh, average, that's up, average up to that 45. score is 45. And it says you're composed. Um, I don't know how you'd get up to 99. I mean, you'd have to be like a monk or something. You're sleeping, maybe. Um, if you're sleeping. Yeah. Um, so there's no way to share this info after you have taken it. This oh, is great. No central... This is information you'd yeah. want to share with a doctor. You'd. Mm-hmm. I want a printout of this. I want to be able to... Also, once you've started the Zen, you can't go back. It doesn't no. look like. No. Nope. You're kind of stuck. You're, you are stuck. Yes. Yeah, that's not yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and finally, uh, it's a buggy app. I mean, other other than the inconsistent um, scores and the inconsistent testing Are they selling it now or is it? This is available now. Yeah, this, this feels available. like a beta. I mean, it, it feels like it hasn't, it, it's been rushed. It, I mean, it feels like this shouldn't be on the market yet. Yeah. That they still have bugs that they need to work out. Of of this product, if this was a beta, if this was something that isn't a, wasn't available, and I knew that I was a beta tester, possibly this would be um, better. Now I am still because this is the smallest device of its kind, and I feel like it, it, it the the hardware is designed well. I am hesitant to give it a. Don't buy. Maybe they could fix this because it could be fixed in the future. No, mm-hmm. don't buy this. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I would give it a don't buy until they actually. Yeah, fix when the they app. fix until, it, then you could buy. It. Absolutely, absolutely. It's okay not to say don't buy. You could say don't buy. I mean, I'm I, I, that was what I was leaning towards. Except if this worked, I would. I well, I got my blood <sighs> oxygen back up now. I'm 92 percent blood okay. oxygen, 36 beats per minute, which means I actually am dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is lo- yeah. So that is weird. It's com- if it um, though, if you don't get consistent results, it's completely worthless. And that's that is true. And, you have to and, have consistent results, um, uh, even if they because were one wrong, data point doesn't right. give you enough. Yeah, information. even if they were wrong, at least you could say, oh well, I'm better than I was. But this is all over the. I definitely yeah. have my heart rate's got to be more than 36 beats per minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, I agree. And almost anything and you, I've seen can measure heart rate. You actually. can hit you can hit save, and then um, you can even hit you know science, and it'll let you know. The average yeah. beats per minute is sixty to eighty. What happens when you're thirty six? Are you, does it have anything um, to say about it's that? It say it's no, it doesn't say. <laughs> it says you might want to consult a doctor immediately. <laughs> Zenzoyam Tinka, keep working. Back to the blackboard yeah. for Zenzoyam Tinka. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay to say though. No. See, people I think are are nervous that the people at Zenzoyam will get upset. Well, if you say don't buy this, but it's yeah. not ready. Yeah, not ready. Yeah. I'd get upset I like if I bought. I to try it. to make all of my opinions honest and yeah. right. Well, it's proven. not dishonest. It's just sometimes you want to be nice to the. It's a nice try. It's a really nice try, and this is uh, the closest thing to what justified. I want. As long as you're justified, as long as you're right. justified in your pros and, and cons. And you saw it. It happened live. We uh, did. We it. didn't try. We did it here. I was There's pressing. No it was all over the place. Right. You can't rely on something that says I got a heart rate of 36 beats. <laughs> I'm calm, but I'm not that calm. Thank you very much. Chad Johnson, no as you know, produces the be- the biggest shows on Twit uh, This Week in Tech, Mac Break Weekly, This Week in Google. He's also the host of the soon-to-be biggest show on Twit, OMG Craft, our Minecraft show. Mm-hmm. Right now, Thursdays, but soon to spread throughout the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. We're going to expand it because uh, we're just really excited about it. Thank you, Chad. No Great problem. To have you. Coming up, we're going to take a look at a mouse. And now everybody's saying everything on this show is 150 bucks. We found something that's more than 150 bucks. It's the Iconia tablet. Alex Ooh. Gumpa has a review of something that many say is a better Windows 8 tablet than the surface. We'll take a look in just a bit. But first, a word from our friends at audible.com, the audio bookstore that saved my life when I was commuting from Petaluma to San Francisco for tech TV. I mean, two or three hours a day in the car. It, I After listening to Sports Talk Radio for half an hour, I just felt like this is my life is flashing before my eyes. 
That's when Audible really saved it. With all those great books, 100,000 titles, and man, everything. I have now, since I started listening to Audible in the year 2000, well over 500 books in my library. The best books. The Now Habit, got it, listened to it, great book. Uh, I've listened to The Lord of the Rings. There's fabulous thrillers, too. There's the new Alex Cross novel. There's uh, great technology books, self-help books, um, history, biography. Fifty Shades of Grey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, it's all there. Now, that might not be a good book to listen to on a commute, but just thinking. Uh, or in the bus. Yeah, or in the bus, definitely awesome. not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, you liked it. It's a good book. <laughs> okay. Audible.com. It's a place to go to get your audio book. In fact, I've got a way you can get it free, your first book. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month, uh, but your first month's free. That means your first book is free. And uh, there's the Audible app uh, on the iPad. It's an iPhone app, but there's also an Audible uh, app for Android, and there's an Audible app for Windows Phone, even for Windows 8 Metro uh, interface. Oh, you're listening to 10Q, 1Q, 8Q. Yeah. It was a good book. Yeah. Very it's interesting. Good. Very interesting book. See, Chad's become a, an Audible fan oh since gosh. you started working here, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You too? Yep. It's awesome. Yeah. It's because of the, the commute. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If you spend any time in the car or at the gym or doing the housework, walking the dog, I love Audible. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Get your first book uh, free. The only challenge is what should your first book be? Uh, so many books. What's your favorite so far that you've listened to on Audible? Oh man, I had we know we know Shannon's Fifty Shades of Grey, but... <laughs> right? You know, Tina Bill... Fey's book was good. Which oh, that was so funny. She read it herself. Mm -hmm. It's but, so Mr. good. Mr. Bossy Pants. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. great book. The bossy Pants. Bill She's Bryson's so At Home. Love Bryson's stuff. All of his stuff. right, and so he, he my He's my favorite book ever is A Short History of Nearly Everything. Yeah, uh, it goes into string theory. I mean, it goes into yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and then he just, uh, I don't know if this is brand new, but this isn't brand new, but I know it's, it's new recent. to me, yeah. yeah, is At Home, which is a story newest, about, actually. about how uh, the things in your home are the things in your home. Yeah. And, and you know, where hallways came from and where, where He's so great. The, cr the credenza came from. And I mean, listen to the Steve Jobs bio and uh, yeah. so oh much gosh. great stuff. Yes. It's kind of a shame. It's, you could spend your whole day listening to Audible. I know. And you wouldn't hear any before I know. you buy And you stuff. just sit sit there, <laughs> listen to Audible. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Greg Brannon, uh, who is, is he an intern? Did we actually give him money? Greg? Yeah. He's um, an intern? Brian, really? do you know? He's your brother. You ought to know. He's he's a full-time student, but we give him a little money every once in a while to show up and right. draw things for <laughs> us. He uh, did a review of the Mionix mouse and mouse pad. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Greg with Twit.tv, and before you buy, and I'm reviewing the Sargus 900 mouse pad and the Neos 8200 mouse. Uh, both of these products are made by Myonix. Um, so to start off with the Sargus 900, uh, this is a really nice high quality mouse pad. Um, very smooth on top, nice rubber back. Um, it's a little bit overboard because it's pretty massive, but if you have a desk that is this size, I would highly suggest getting it because it is very high quality. Um, and moving on to the Neos uh, 8200, um, these two work really great together. Um, there's absolutely no lag when I was using this mouse. Um, a little bit about the uh, Neos. Um, the ergonomics on this mouse are fantastic. Uh, it has seven programmable buttons, uh, your left, right click, center mouse uh, scroll wheel, as well as two buttons on top and two more on the left side. Um, there is software to, that you can download for this mouse, but it also works if you just plug it in and go. It has a 32-bit uh, ARM processor, as well as a braided cable. Uh, so to test out this mouse uh, in a fast-paced game, I tried Quake Live. Overall, I'd say that the Mionix uh, Sargus 900 and the Neos 8200 are both really good products um, if they fit your needs. Moving on to the pros and cons, I'm going to start with the Sargus 900. Uh, this is a really great uh, mouse pad. Um, some of the pros has no uh, friction on the top surface, super smooth. Uh, it hasn't slid at all um, since I started using it. Some of the cons, it's a bit pricey at $29.99. And also, um, it is a very large mouse pad. If you don't have a desk that could fit it, it is unreasonable to buy it. Moving on to the Neos 8200, uh, some of the pros has a great ergonomic design, seven programmable buttons, and very sensitive to small movements. Some of the cons, at $89.99, it is very expensive for a mouse, uh, and 
I really wish it was wireless. Now for buy, try, or don't buy, for the Sargus 900, I'm gonna go ahead and say try. Uh, if this mouse pad fits your desk, uh, it's great. Um, and for the Neos 8200, I'm gonna say buy. Um, even with the price, it is a all-around great mouse and great gaming mouse. I'm Greg with Twit.tv, and before you buy, thanks for watching. Greg Burnett, Grog, we call him. <laughs> that is a mouse pad. That thing is a blotter. That's not a mouse pad. I love that mouse pad. <laughs> I, I bought the medium one. And I, I wouldn't have mind a having mouse a giant towel. one. Can you, is it, could you trim it if it were like... Uh, you probably could. I would worry about the sides fraying from right. the microfiber on top. Yeah, it does have microfiber. I, I think they have a few different size options. So you mm -hmm. could they do. Right. I, yeah. I think that's a great idea because I always fall off the edge of the mouse pad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, I don't uh, think a have wired mouse table. is a con. A wired mouse I is a pro. Wired. You don't want wireless in a game because no, you, you don't, don't want any latency. Exactly. Now, the only negative, you're a lefty too, Shannon. Do you play righty? I play righty. Oh, yeah. we'll see. There I you play, go. I'm like, you know, WASD. Because that was clearly not a neutral mouse. It was very much <laughs> contoured uh, yeah. for yes. a right hand. So yes. I always look at mice and I want to make sure they're either neutral or they make a left-handed version. We'll have to mm -hmm. check into that. But you know what? That looked like a nice a nice mouse. It is nice. All right. I'm going to take a walk because Al we've got Alex over here. Alex Gumpel. Can you still hear me? Yep. If I walk? All right. Alex Gumpel is here to show us uh, a new tablet. This is from Acer, the Iconia. Yes. And we've been hearing so many good things about the Iconia. Uh, I'm dying to see it. Now, I notice you have your Microsoft Surface. As for my notes. Okay. Now, is this Windows 8 Pro? This is Windows 8, not Pro, just regular Windows so 8. So it's RT. Not RT. So there's regular Windows 8? Wi Windows 8, is they come in regular and Pro. Oh, because I was confused because the they call it the Surface Pro. I thought all Windows 8 was a Pro. No. So, so the, this the, is the Windows 8. The cheaper Windows tablets come with just regular Windows 8, the higher... Well, that's an issue. What do I lose if I don't uh, have... It's mostly just like domain joining and business okay. stuff that you don't the really need. The high end right. stuff. All right. So this is it. Yes, this is it. So uh, this is an Atom-based PC. It's not an i5, um, but it's not an ARM either. So right. it's... Um, it's an Intel chip, but the Atom, remember we saw a lot of Atoms in the early days of netbooks. They were really low and slow right. and junky. This is a better Atom than that. No, it's no? still slow and junky. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's basically, this is kind of right in between uh, an ARM tablet right. and an i5 tablet. Okay. Um, so I, Wait a minute, you just broke it. Yeah, I broke it. I took so it apart. So it comes right off. This is it comes with a stock, or some of them come with a dock, depending right. on what. And it feels like it's heavy enough. It feels like there must be more battery. There in is this. a battery in there, which okay. about doubles your battery life almost, That's great. which is very nice. Um, but uh, so um, snaps in securely and easily. Yes, yes, it does. Um, and it's got a 10.1 inch screen. Uh, it's got an 8 megapixel camera on the back, which is all right. It's um, I don't know if you could uh, really see it much there, but it's uh, uh, there we go. Yeah. It, it it's works. like a camera it's, it's phone. It's grainy, but it's not. Yeah, you know, it's, all it's right. not much different from a but camera. But what phone. idiot takes pictures with a tablet? Now, so. what's funny is this is a small. This is an ultrabook sized thing, but because of the battery and the keyboard, it actually feels kind of heavy. How much right. does that weigh? I don't know. I couldn't find it. It on, feels on like specs. three and a half pounds. But almost. it it is. Yeah, with the dock, it's heavy. But as a tablet, it's actually light. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. This is lighter than the usual tablet. Right. This actually is really nice as just a tablet. And most of the weight then is coming from the extra battery, right? And the, uh, and the, and the keyboard, keyboard. And, and all the other stuff. All right. Well, uh, you know, this is. It, let me. Can I? Can I touch it? Yeah. yeah. May, may I touch, touch it? Touch, it touch your you tablet. Like, Leo. So it's a touch screen tablet. Uh, let me just touch the Windows key. Oh, it's. Is it wrote? Is it? Is it? Okay. There we go. It feels fairly snappy. I mean, it doesn't yeah. feel slow. No. It, it's. It's about um, performance wise. It's about the same as the ARM, except. This actually runs a desktop, and right. you can install any old Windows apps. Well, and that's the thing. I've been using the uh, the um, a Surface RT most of the time, and right. so uh, this doesn't feel slow to me because it, you know, it, it's kind of like a, an RT. Um, that's not bad. This is not bad. Yeah, and, and like I put Photoshop in there just to see how that works. What kind and of what kind of work really Photoshop? It, it works, um, and it actually works fine for just for basic stuff. If you load up a giant image and do a lot of processing, then it probably will right. slow down a lot. But um, for basic stuff, it's it's fine. Now, the screen looks a little maybe dim to me. Uh, is it? It's not an uh, IPS screen. It is an IPS screen. It it's actually, right. it's very nice. It might just be... Uh, we could just brighten it up. There we go. Shake it's it. Like, that like always makes sketch. it better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The brightness is way down. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. That's much better. Yeah. And, yeah, now the angle's pretty good. That's how, one way you can always right. tell an IPS screen is it looks good off angle. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice screen. And okay. It has a ni nice layer of glass it feels, on it. It feels... Uh, the response feels good. It's a little glary, but uh, much, a lot of these touch screens are. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my complaints is that the material of it, it's it's plastic, but it so wishes it was aluminum. 
Uh, just it the, does. Back, the back of it. It does wish it was like, aluminum. It just, it's, it they feels, make it look it looks, like it's aluminum, yeah, but, but it's, it's just tech and plastic, plastic, and it's yeah, really kind of cheap yeah. feeling because of that. Well, is it a cheap uh, computer because of that? Um, it's cheap-ish. It's uh, low end is five hundred dollars, uh, and that does not include the doesn't keyboard. Doesn't include this. They have right. uh, they have like six different models going from five hundred to eight hundred. Um, more expensive ones come with the dock. Some don't. Right. Um, has an HDMI port, which has is an, uh, nice. yeah, micro HDMI. It's got micro uh, USB, micro USB, but it comes with a dongle for uh, for regular USB size. So you can plug a keyboard or mouse in to the tablet. Uh, it also has USB on the dock too. And I like the micro SD, so that means I can add memory to right. this. What is the memory capacities on this? Uh, it's thirty two and sixty four. So this doesn't go to one twenty eight. Doesn't go to one twenty eight. Uh, you, you don't get much off the bat. You probably about twenty gigs of usable space. I right. think. Um, but but then you could put another 32 or 64 gig SD right, card yeah. and then in that, here and that, you'd have plenty, plenty of storage. That you have inside. Yeah. Um, 500 bucks just for the tablet, 32, I would guess. Pro yeah. yeah. Um, and then it, it's got it goes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it has not NF 3G. No, no 3G, but it has NFC. Oh, that's neat. So I could tap so, it against something. Well, so let's see if... Um, how, how would I use the NFC on uh, If we go to a fabulous website, yeah. uh, we can go devices and we could do tap to send. And if I pull out an NFC oh. and device... So could you could then tap, tap it against, it against your Lumia there. phone, and you're sending that website and then to the phone. I got that's it on cool. My phone. Hey, that's neat. I like that. So yeah, it's uh, NFC is handy. It's a little clunky in Windows 8, but uh, that'll be worked out, I'm sure. So uh, this is the, the Acer Iconia. Yes, the and Iconia W5. The W5. The W7 or the 700 series is the actual i5 one. It seems to me with an Atom processor, it should be a little, maybe a little less expensive. Five hundred dollars for the yeah, base unit. Yeah, but it's about the same price as a Surface RT. Right, but um, you get full Windows. But you get full Windows, yeah. but the build quality isn't as nice. So it's kind of a balance of what you would rather have. If a really nice device, but right. you don't have the desktop, or if you want the desktop. You it's a little weird when it's folded up because of yeah. the, the hinge and the way this is. It just it this feels like it should be more it's, of a smooth. It's clunky. Yeah, but it does have a grip. But which as is a nice. tablet it's alone, it's it's really nice. I think. Yeah, and uh, now, it does seem like it has a pretty sure dock. And yeah, it feels pretty uh, secure. The dock is actually my big has my biggest complaints. Um, one is that it's not well balanced. So uh, it just kind of over. Do that. Yeah. And it's just kind of if you touch it, you know. Yeah, just, that's not good. It's not good, and the screen itself is just kind of wobbly, even right. if you have it up. Like that, and you're touching it, so it's just it's not weighted down on here right. quite as well. Uh, the trackpad is pretty awful. It does not have uh, any kind of like I couldn't figure out how to get it to scroll with two fingers or anything. Um, and because it's got integrated buttons, if you're trying to click while you're moving around, if you have your finger rested on a certain way, it the, the mouse just kind of doesn't know what to do and gets confused. That's not so good. Um, keyboard, the keys are like smaller than the usual standard keyboard, so it's kind of hard to type on. You get a little used to it, but it still have a lot of typos. And also kind of a glitch that I've found is that sometimes the keys stick. Not hardware-wise, they don't actually physically stick in, but if you're typing or just type something and then the letter just keeps repeating until you kind of like backspace a bunch. That's not good. That's probably a software thing that might get worked out in right. sometime in the future. Um, another glitch I've had with this one is it's crashed on me a bunch of times. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, when it's either trying to wake up from sleep or go in, about to go into sleep, it just freezes and I can't do anything. And that's it. not a problem with Windows 8. You think that's the I, hardware? I mean, it could be. It could be the hardware, right. and who knows? And it also might just be this one device. It may right. not be in all of them. And restoring Windows to the factory settings might fix that. Right. It's hard to say, but you have to hold the button down, turn it off, turn it back on to fix it. From, that's kind from of there. annoying. Yeah. Pros and cons on the uh, Iconia cons, W5. Uh, battery life is really good. Um, How much? Probably about a day with just a tablet, oh, about a great. day and a half with a tablet on the dock. That's of, really um, good. Standard, regular use. Yeah. Um, it, it runs a little warm right in the corner here when you kind of do anything, really. Um, but that's not an issue. It doesn't, doesn't get too hot. You'd almost expect that. That's probably where the CPU right. is, yeah. Um, screen, like I said, is really nice. No I fan in this. No fan. So it's quiet. Right, yeah. Um, so battery life screen, and that has full Windows 8 is a really nice plus because I could have my desktop how I normally have my desktop right, and run right. apps like usual. You mentioned some of the cons are physical cons. Right. So the the con is the dock kind of all in one is is a con, I would say. Right. Uh, just the, all the things I said about it. Um, also the trackpad and um, just, just kind of generally cheap feeling. So... What do you think? If somebody's in the market for Windows 8, it's a fairly well, inexpensive device. I mean, I, I'm calling it a try, yeah. um, but it really depends on what you need. Uh, like I said, it's kind of in between a Surface and a, and a real i5 thing. Right. So it kind of depends if it, it, as a primary device, I would say no. As a um, secondary device or a companion, like a Surface, it's nice. Um, and then you get the desktop too. So it just really depends on what you need and what you already have. All right. So a try. A try. For the Acer Iconia. You're right. It's a little warm. 
All right there. Alex Gumpel is the flow master, the man in charge of keeping the bits flowing here at the uh, Twitbrick House something like that. studio. <laughs> hey, he's got his own lab coat. We know he must be doing something very, very important. Thank you for the review, Alex. We appreciate it. Thanks to Shannon Morse. Thanks to Greg, uh, uh, I want to say the name right, Burnett. To Chad Johnson, Tony Wang, uh, and Loric, our intern for uh, all of their great reviews. Thanks to you for watching. We put these reviews up on YouTube. In fact, some of them are up there already, youtube.com slash before you buy, so you can look at individual reviews or share them with people who are interested in buying this product. But you get the whole show also at twit.tv slash BYB. If you've got a, there it is, if you've got a question or a product you'd like us to review, email BYB at twit.tv. Uh, TV. We do the show every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that would be 2300 UTC on the Twit Network, twit.tv. Thanks for joining us. And as I said, audio and video on-demand versions always available at our website, twit.tv slash BYB. We'll see you next time. Remember, if you're in the market, you got to watch before you buy. See you later.